Today's episode is brought to you by BetterHelp. If you're thinking of giving therapy a try, give BetterHelp a try. Also, today we're brought to you by Factor. Factor is going to get you those good meals all inside of you. Now, let's jump into this podcast. Hello, everybody. It's time for Ghost and Friend Dog. Ghost and Friend Dog in the morning. In the morning. Right here, live, 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 live. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the episode of Cox and Crendo in the morning. Hey, at a normal intro this time. You know what? Sometimes I my brain doesn't get ahead of my mouth. <laughs> or vice versa. I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sometimes. Uh, yeah. Well, most of the time, actually, you know what? I'm actually curious now how many times you've had a, a goof intro and how many times you've had like a, a like standard intro. Don't ask be. that. You know, someone's going <laughs> to go out there and, and then we're going to learn something about me that's like, actually, it's gotten worse over the years. And I don't want to know that. I don't want to know those things. Is Jesse's brain deteriorating? <laughs> <laughs> I don't need to know that answer. I'm fine <laughs> not knowing. <laughs> Looking at the 10 year graph, you can actually plot <laughs> his brain cell to growth and death. <laughs> he is actually getting so much worse. It's concerning. <laughs> um, so, yeah, somebody do that. That'll be fun. That's nah, not fun. Don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> Speaking of fun, how's your week? Yo, I'm sure I did things. I don't remember anything except for the last four days. All I've been doing is playing Alan Wake 2. I'm so immersed. It is truly one of the greatest things I've ever played in my entire life. I am living for this game. Wow. Yeah. You've, had, uh, you've actually had a lot of good games. Till you had Baldur's Gate. Yeah. Yep. Alan Wake. You had... That's I mean, Actually, that's it. But <laughs> it's two games. I mean, I, there's a lot of games that I've just fallen in love with this year. So I'm not... I'm trying to think off the top of my head... Baldur's Gate, Stone Cold Killer, amazing. Um, I am absolutely here for Alan Wake. Alan Wake may be my game of the year, even though Baldur's Gate 3 is so good. Uh, Dead Space Remastered, one of my favorite games ever remastered, came out this year. Like That was at the beginning of the year. Forgot that existed. Star Wars Jedi Survivor, Final <laughs> Fantasy 16. I've been eating good. Resident Evil 4 Remake. I mean, I know other games existed. I'm sure someone would say, like, Starfield was their game of the year. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that. But, like, you know, Zelda came out this year. I didn't even play it, but I know people are going to be like, game of the year, bro, game of the year. There's actually, so many uh, games. This, this is a big year. This was a pretty big year. I will say uh, I, I'm i going to be playing Pikmin 4 soon. And Yo, then, your Pikmin 4 is amazing. That's the thing. And I'm listen, I'm more than Nintendo guy. So I'm like, all right, we got Pikmin. I got it back when it came out. But that's when I got my concussion. The old, the old head bang. You can't so, be a Pikmin with concussion. That's just, you can't do yeah. that. So I couldn't even play it. it gave me eye strain. So now I'm going to play it. And then the new Super Mario Wonder came out. And everyone's like, dude, this is amazing. So I got to play that one. So I I'm bet you would play. love that game. Based on 100%. everything you can do, I want to watch you play Super Mario <laughs> Wonder. Actually, a lot. I want to watch yeah. that. So I'm finally uh, getting to the end of just constantly playing either uh, Hardcore WoW Classic or uh, Kaizo Iron Mon. So I gotta, I want to add a little variety. So I think I'm going to have like Mario Monday and like Pikmin Wednesday or something. Amazing. Uh, I had I had my uh, WoW week this week, I guess, a little bit where I, for the briefest of moments, you know, now that dear old Bobby Kotick is leaving, thank, thank Jesus. God. Um, <laughs> Yeah, now that he's gone, I don't know if it's going to change anything, but spiritually, I feel a little bit better about, about being interested in, <laughs> yeah. in it all again. And so, I yeah, I saw everyone was like, dude, there's leaks about the next expansion. And one of my favorite, even though I absolutely hate it, one of my favorite tropes of WoW is like, long ago, there was another continent, but it was <laughs> shrouded in magic and forgotten. Until now, and it's like, okay, how many times have we done this? You can't keep just being like, "There's a whole other place you haven't been." Like, all right, okay, it's just like the, the mists of whatever. Yeah, mists of Pandaria, yeah. the the like the Dragonflight one. Now that was BFA. like, and then it opened a new realm. Like they're all is the same thing. Even when it's like the islands, when it was the uh, uh, goblins and stuff. 
Yeah. It's always like there was another realm. It's like okay, <laughs> all right, sure. I've just uh, I've hit that point now where I've done five hardcore Tarn shamans, and I think now that I'm level thirty four, almost thirty five, I think this is it. If I die. <laughs> I don't think I can I can get back to here. Like when you're in like you know like I died at like level twelve. I'm like okay I can get there fast. That's a couple hours. 15. Yeah, that's yeah. Not- then like twenty three. I was like all right you know I can get there like a, in a week or like a little under a week. And then now I'm like this is like weeks effort. <laughs> like I don't I don't think I can come back from this. But, but it should be easier. I mean, what's your objective? Get you, are you running Are you running dungeons or are you not? Because that's insane. No. I am not running it. My shaman is my solo guy. We do have like a goofy alliance group, like me, Benji, Sput, Brett. Like we're just kind of doing dungeons, and I'm a dwarf paladin. It's a it's a goofy group. That's our but, dungeon. But thing. if you die, you die. Yeah, if you die, you die. It's an official server thing, so it's like right, right. Uh, but the, you're doing it as a team doing dungeons. Yeah. Yes. I don't know that so I put my faith in those three <laughs> to do. I don't know oh, that I put yeah, my faith no. in you to get me through a dungeon. Well, we, be, I would be dead. <laughs> We already have enough issues trying to schedule it. Because then Benji's <laughs> like, oh, you do like uh, British time. And he's just like, dude, I don't want to do British time. And like, I'm like, oh my God. This- <laughs> well, that's how you guys are still alive. You just oh, haven't yeah, done it, it that much. <laughs> uh, yeah, we just did Wailing Caverns and we did Dead Mines before that. That's literally all we've done. Uh, but my shaman, yeah, I'm at 35, so or about to be 35. So it's, it, it's getting there. But I actually like level 30 to like 50. Once I hit 50, that's right. I hate it. Winter Spring is like the only zone past 50 that I like. So I told people were like, if you hit 60, you're going to raid. And I was like, God, no. I was like, I will I will literally go to Thunder Bluff and I will jump off and I will just say I return to the Earth Mother. And those will be my <laughs> last words. No way. I would I would sit and log out in Thunder Bluff and I would forever be there. I'll never he'll never have died. He will just live in Thunder Bluff, smoke in that good Thunder Herb and just live in his life. You know what one thing I noticed is all of the classic like heroes had custom voices, which I don't think they do anymore. But like back then there was like he's like he literally sounds like Gandalf, uh Cairn Blood. He's like, Yeah, dude. Me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love that dude. That guy was great. Yeah. Uh, it was just even like Gaslo or in Ratchet, he's like, Hey, welcome to Ratchet. Time to work. Yeah, they were <laughs> all like, great. Okay. Yeah. Um so yeah, that's the main thing is whatever that had, then I'm going to be doing Pikmin Monday and Mario Wednesday, whatever I said. What I like to do is I don't like to play all the games in one city. So I do one level and then I'm like, all right, we did our level. So I did that with Donkey Kong. I've done that with like a banjo too. I did it with a bunch of stuff for one levels, like a couple hours and you're like, all right, move on. Is it a couple hours? <laughs> it depends. When you a first Donkey start Kong the game, levels a couple hours, there's no way. Tropical freeze. A couple hours. Okay, so the first levels were like an hour. Okay, in fact, hold on. I'll let you know right now. Kren Clips, <laughs> Donkey Kong, all right? So it progressively got crazier. So part one was the first level. It took an hour and a half. Second level only took an hour and 14 minutes. Third level was an hour. Fourth level was an hour, 24 minutes. Fifth was an hour, 44 minutes. And the final level was three hours. <laughs> Because I could do- not beat the last boss to save my life. Is that a different game than what I remember from the Donkey Kong games where you just ran across like a stage? No, it's. I mean, those are Donkey Kong games. Did you not play Tropical Freeze? No, no, I didn't. Okay, well, it's kind of like the old school Donkey Kongs, but like modern graphics. Okay, and but little, like those didn't crazy. seem like each level was long. Well, at the you do like a level and then you progress through the map, right? Like there's the map. Oh, so you're you go- referring to like the the not a stage, a level level. So you're yeah, so like the ice zone or yeah, the like. Exactly. Okay, okay. So it'd be like if you're playing Super Mario World, the different islands is what you're yeah, saying. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. I thought I'm you meant that. the no. stages, and I was no, like, no, there's no, no way, bro. <laughs> <laughs> no, that would that's literally like, it could be like ten minutes. So yeah, no, I did that. So that's kind of what I like doing because then it, they usually take like an hour or two and I'm like, all right, then I can do something else. And then every week because someone's like, oh, he's doing the ice level this week or whatever it is. So it's fun. Uh, that's that's cute. I like, I like that. Yeah. yeah, it's fun. It's a you know, little thing you look forward to every week. Um, I don't know. What else did I buy? I didn't really like Zelda. Not gonna lie. 
I, neither did I, but it's not. I didn't like the first one. And it isn't because it's not a great game. It's just not a game for me. I think it's too open. I think it's too unstructured. I need to be pushed in a direction or I literally will sit there. I knew. I know what would happen. If I played this new Zelda game, i just make like giant dick monsters the entire time. I know what I would do. Right. I'd make My rocket idea. ships. I'd make boats, but I would, ne I would never see the end of it. My issue is that I like the open world, which is why I love the first one and just exploring and running around. And this one, just there's too much structure they've added to the open world because they're like, you got to build a race car. You got to build a rocket ship. You got to build a super weapon. And I'm like, dude, I don't want to do that. I just want to run around. But like they kind of force you into it in a way because people be like, just do, do, do it the way you want. But like, I think it's you. so funny. You think that's structure. I hate. Well, I just hate that the, you have to do that. Like, I guess for you don't me, have to I'm like, like, it gives you so many options. It's too much. It's just too much. <laughs> I think I just get PTSD from Banjo Kazooie Nuts and Bolts. <laughs> Why <laughs> is that? Is it because a game where you crafted stuff? Yeah, you had the craft cars, and it was just the the worst part of Banjo Kazooie Nuts and Bolts was it was supposed to be Banjo Kazooie Three E or whatever they were gonna call it, and then they shifted and made it a racing game, and they joke about how it was gonna be the actual third game, but they're like kids these days don't want that. And I was like, yes, we do. <laughs> we do want that. Everybody wants it. And then I just, because the whole time you're playing it, you're like, this would have been the level where it's a platformer and this would have been not a car. It would have been something. And I just, mm. it was, I just hated it. And so I think just building stuff just brings, there's like an added element of just trauma from that. <laughs> no, I, I like kind of get it. I, like it reminds me of and the weird 2010s Final Fantasy period where everything was like Final Fantasy 13. They were doing like Final Fantasy 13 and then Final Fantasy 13 this thing and, and and there was like they were making like five Final Fantasy 13 games for some uh, insane reason. <laughs> yeah. And then when they realized like maybe we should stop, they then made Final Fantasy 13 the whatever it was called like verses into Final Fantasy 15. And you can see bits and pieces of what was the original game in there but they like just couldn't get rid of it and it was really upsetting because you're like they just started fresh this would have <laughs> been a great game yeah yeah so it's i don't know because the like the first zelda like when i played that you know you had your like things you would do you learn your powers and your little zelda stuff then you could just explore the world and you just like go you do the bosses do all that i just enjoyed the simplicity of that more but I get that some people love Bill. Like, some people are like, oh, I hated the first one. I love the second one. I think it's just, it depends. It's all so, preference. Yeah, yeah. Like, I yeah. couldn't handle either of them. Not because I think they're bad games. Just because I'm like, I will never, I will get bored after, like, putting a ton of time into this. And I'll never complete it. I'll be like, I got what I want out of it. And then people will yell at me forever. Like, Jesse, you never completed it. And I was like, you know what? I'm just not going to start. I'm just not going to start it. <laughs> yeah. No, you're you're the completionist type of person. I'm definitely not. I think that uh, definitely feeds into it. That's like, weren't you supposed to, aren't you doing Skyrim again? Wasn't yes, that your thing? I have uh, all the mods and stuff ready to go. I uh, I mean, man, I just do too much. <laughs> I, as we know, I do too much. And every time I try to do less, I end up doing just as much for some reason. Like, yeah. you know, it's it's stressful. I don't know. <laughs> but I uh, yeah. I think I'm going to have to start cutting back stuff. And it, I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Yeah. Didn't you? He said that. And like the other day, you tweeted about doing another show. As you said well, the Dodger show. Yes, and that is part of cutting back. I might have to cut things to then do that. Yeah. But that will, in theory, replace the stuff I cut. Ah, uh, I see. But that will be a once a week thing versus a multi thing, right? So yeah. it might be smarter just to like you know scrap a daily show and do a once a week show. You know what I mean? I yeah. don't know how that's gonna mess with stuff, but we'll see. I mean, we'll see. I, like, it's is rough. This supposed it's rough. To be a, is this supposed to be a gaming show, or is this just a it's talk supposed to show? be an anything show? It's it's friends hanging out, talking about like the games they played or the weird shows they watched. Like, I don't know. We it's not a thing yet in any shape or form. It's Dodger <laughs> and I right. being like, what if we made a show and then we invited our friends on to be on the show with us? That's literally it. Listen, I got I got a pitchy idea. All right. You know how every podcast has those people that are like the editor sound people and they always like buzz them in, you know, yeah. there's like the host and then they're like, let's talk to editor Jimmy. And he's just like, Psh! and he's like, yeah, guys, uh, pulling us up or like, yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, see, 
I can do that, but I can be <laughs> terrible at it. I don't, right? I don't know. I don't know that we need terrible, but like I'll take less than good, maybe. <laughs> I can do that. <laughs> less than good is my middle name. <laughs> All right then. Yep. Yeah. Um, I don't know that I like the idea of giving you control of a soundboard like Aruga, <laughs> but I'll gladly shout Crendor. Look that up. <laughs> That's all I need. I'll be the guy who looks stuff up. Yeah, we always got to have a look stuff up guy. Yeah, but they still like buzz in to just give their you know input on certain things. Sure, sure, sure. Right. Yeah, <laughs> that's what it, that's it's like a modern podcast thing. It's just it's a great thing to have. Uh, apparently, know? yeah, I keep seeing the that happen. There's always man. like a dude. There's always a dude who barely says like anything, and then eventually he's like, "Yeah, I was there. I saw that." Yeah. It's like, oh, okay. <laughs> I was uh, they have one of those on the radio because there's like the two guys that talk, and then the the editor guy, the sound guys, just always come in, and one guy was like talking about potatoes. And then they got this big potato thing. And the next day, they had him do a potato tier list. And he ranked all of his potato dishes he's ever eaten. <laughs> I mean, you make a valid point. Usually, the radio show format is two guys and one girl who's smarter than both of them. Yeah. So, like, it's a valid point. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Uh, anyway, I do have something that happened this week. Okay. So, <laughs> I went out with my friend to a restaurant because he was like let's get a burger and a beer because i hadn't talked to him in a while i was like all right burger and a beer like that's a good friend that's a good friend reaching out yeah so we go out went to this place it's like a you know it's one of those like half bar half restaurant type things but it's pretty good and we're like all right does it have a cool chicago name like bonachacos (laughs) yeah we go to bonachacos went to bonachacos and you know we're sitting there we're next to two people well, next to him is in like one sitting right behind us and one sitting like the there's a te- an empty table and then like a I just want to say for the there. record, there is I looked up Bonachaco <laughs> right. and uh, I don't know who I, I, there's there is a Bonachaco, but it's someone named Bonachaco Fandy. It is a person. <laughs> he's an influencer somewhere. He goes to the eat e- 2D. Uh, University de Ob- Bome, Cali- what the hell? Is- I'm looking this up. What is this? <laughs> Where is this at? Where is this? Google search this. Where is th- what country is this? West Africa. Okay. Is that where Bonachaco is? That's where Bonachaco lives. Huh. And then they- hell yeah, <laughs> Bonachaco. Just opened a restaurant in Chicago then. Damn, that guy's living his best life. All right. Sorry to interrupt. <laughs> uh, anyway, then there's... So there's a table behind us, these two guys talking, probably like late 50s, just two, like maybe like just in their 50s, I don't know, late, whatever. And then there's another table of like two guys and a girl, like literally a podcast, <laughs> just sitting in the corner uh, talking. And they're like, you know, the table, uh, there's like us, empty table, them. So we can hear both of them pretty easily. And we're like, all right, just sitting there watching sports, like talking, but then... We hear the table behind us of these two 50-year-old men, and he's just like, well, I don't know how you don't believe in religion then. And the guy's like, well, I don't know how you do believe in religion. And, we, and I was just like, uh, oh, boy, is this going to get crazy? And my friend was just like, yeah, I don't know why they're we're like debating religion at a bar on a Thursday. I was like, I don't know. And the one guy was just like, you know, I just don't believe that this thing and he's like getting louder and the other guy's like just uh, tell me tell me what you believe all right and they go back and forth they're just like (laughs) getting louder and louder and then after like five minutes he's like this is why i like you though because we could have civil debates (laughs) 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 and then i was like all right well that's happening but the other table was uh, the complete opposite they're getting crazy all right, this guy was like, I flew in from Philadelphia the other day, and uh, it's great to see you guys. And, you know, we went to the World Series game. All right, and then we got a, you know, we ate and I got a cheese steak. Yeah, it was great. And then I came here, you know, I get off the plane. First thing I do, I get Portillo's. That's what I do. <laughs> and they're just like, yeah, it's great to see you. Great to see you. I haven't seen you since uh, you're dating multiple girls. <laughs> And he's like, 
Oh, yeah, I remember. I remember. That's the only time I dated multiple girls. That was Carrie. That's she was the one that got away. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And I was like, OK, so <laughs> one table is just like this guy who I guess world traveler and he's just dating everybody. But the one girl he dated, I don't know how long ago it was, was Carrie and she got away. So I guess he's just still not with anybody. Then the other table, they're just yelling about philosophy. The one <laughs> that got away. Debates. Yeah. Uh, and then I, I kind of just stopped listening uh, at that point. But it was, it was just every so often I'd like tune in, but nothing crazy, you know, and that was uh, that was that. But it was a good time. If you just listen, this is just another great example. If you just listen to the weird shit around you, you're going to hear some amazing stuff. Oh, yeah. That's all you gotta do. I want to know listen. more about that guy and dating multiple women. Like, did he he try? He, you know, he flew too close to the sun. Mm -hmm. Like he flew. He to, he, he could have had. He could have had the one, and she got away. Yeah. Which <laughs> I don't know if that's a good or bad thing. I feel like she probably got away for the best. This guy sounds like he's just dating everybody. Yeah. No. I, hopefully, he learned a lesson. Is what I'm saying. I don't hopefully, think he, did. he like. Well, <laughs> he's single now, so maybe yeah. lesson learned. Maybe. Maybe, although this, they made it sound like it was a while ago. <laughs> like, I'd say at least 10 years. So, I don't know what was going on. They were, they were having a great time. He got the ribs. He was like, I got to try these ribs. So, that's what he got. Uh, but still a great time. Good stuff. I, want, I love that he's like, I got to try the ribs. <laughs> so, he's like, I got to try these ribs. Guys, I got to try the ribs. Got to try the ribs. Know. <laughs> uh, I don't, so can that, I ask you a question? Like real yeah. talk. What's your take on ribs? Uh, I like ribs. Not like all the time. Rib, like ribs, to me are like a once or twice a year thing. I'm gonna ribs for me are like once or twice a decade thing. Oh. I don't like ribs. Why not? If ribs are given to me, I guess I'll I'll politely eat them. I don't know. Every time I eat ribs. It's always, it always either too fatty or it's like, I don't know. It, it makes me, it, I don't too feel well. Too solidified, too chewy? No, I, oh, it just doesn't make me feel well. But yeah. if you were to give me any other type of barbecued or grilled meat, fine. Ribs, I don't know what it is. Huh. I can't explain it. I wish I had an answer for you. I just don't like them. And I know I'm going to get someone and be like, what? How's the fat guy not like ribs? Great question, <laughs> Earth. I don't know. <laughs> I don't uh, like them. Let's see. A full rack of ribs contains around 1,100 calories. Of course, that's normally not what you're eating in one sitting, but that's the general amount. Uh, 550 comes from fat. Whole that's 55. Whole, so yeah, it's a lot of fat in there. I don't like. I don't like fatty meat. Now, if it's like a steak and it's marbled well and like the fat's like a little grilled, like that's delicious. But like chewy fat, it again. We've talked about this before. I'm a texture person. Yeah. Text, if, it, if the texture is too gooey, chewy, slimy, it makes me sick It every time. Yeah, I feel that. I, I can't have high fat. Thing. I mean, I don't even got my gallbladder. So I can't. Well, I mean, that's, I mean, that's just, you know, <laughs> bi biologically you can't. Yeah. No, so it's, uh, it says baby back ribs are the best because they're lowest in fat. And more tender and quick cooking. I mean, That's I, I learned that Food from Network. the commercials on TV. I want my baby back, baby back. Yeah. <laughs> well, I learned that. I mean, that obviously, I know that. I mean, you didn't learn that. You just learned that you want I want them. my baby back, baby back, baby back. But you back. don't even yeah. want them. No, but that's what the, that's what the TV told me. <laughs> well, that's so true. I feel, and so, of course, <laughs> it's TV like, okay, it. well, yeah, the TV says it. Okay. It's like those kids with the Apple Jacks. Like, yeah. Why do you like them? They're just like we just do. Yeah, they're not, it doesn't matter. They don't taste like apples. <laughs> still, still weird. Still weird <laughs> kind of commercial yeah. to have. But like, okay. Oh my god, that reminds me. Isn't the the McRib is like coming back? Isn't it? Is it? Hold on, I'm googling McRib. It's, uh, is yeah, the McRib, McRib back? McRib is back. It says so. Is this according to the McRib locator? Oh wait, McRib locator says 14 days. Oh, 
the United States to select locations. 14 days, 16 hours. 30. I hate this exists. I hate this exists. <laughs> oh, yeah, here it is. McDonald's rib, McRib is back. Let's see. Uh, you know what sucks? Pricing over the last four months. This is so funny. Highest cost of a McRib is Derby, Kentucky. Uh, no, Derby, Connecticut. $6.99. But in Jasper 20, uh, 20C, Crendor, it's happening again. It's <laughs> happening. I'm losing my mind. It's losing it. Six, six dollar, two, two for six dollars. <laughs> Why you would two. ever want two, two big ribs is beyond me. Oh, yeah, no. I already said I can handle one a year. That's it. All I can, the only McRib I can handle is one mixed in with the great McCox and Crendor. That's true. You got to get, get that McCox and Crendor. It's got to get that McCox and Crendor. Yeah. Uh, see, they did that did, last year. They did that thing. They're like the McRib farewell tour, and it's back. So we, that was a lie. It's all. I mean, it seems it was, like a lie. It seems yeah. like it's always a lie. I knew it was a lie then, and it, it it surely was. It turns out not everyone was ready to say goodbye to the McRib after last year's farewell tour. While it won't be available nationwide, some lucky fans may find their favorite elusive saucy sandwich at their local McDonald's this November, read a statement from McDonald's USA. So, yeah. They were literally like, it's a farewell tour. And then they're like, oh, never mind. Turns out people like this sandwich. Like, yeah, that's why it's been here for like 40 years or whatever it is. I wonder what the rest of the world's vibe about McRibs are. Like, uh, McRib, McRib, Germany. Does anyone in Germany like McRibs? I don't know. Did you know that Germany happens to be the only country that serves McDonald's McRib sandwich year round? What? Damn. Oh, they must love the McRib. Damn. Look at that. Well, oh, who knew? I don't know why I chose <laughs> Germany. I have no clue why I chose Germany, but here we are. It does seem like they'd be the ones that would like the McRib, though. Like, you just drink a bunch of beer, and then you're like, man, I want a McRib. Like, you it know sounds what's crazy? Like would happen. The McRib was introduced the same year I was born. Am I a McRib? You might be. Uh, I feel like why, a McRib. Uh... <laughs> Maybe that's why I don't like to eat ribs, because I yeah. am a rib. That's what I was going to say. You don't like ribs because you are a McRib. Damn, dude. <laughs> wow. It's, uh, yeah, it's practically cannibalism. <laughs> practically. Practically. Uh, spe actually, speaking of which, we watched that what? vampire Nick Cage movie. Oh, yeah. Okay. I was like, where are you speaking going with this? <laughs> that was a great movie. That was, it would have been better if it was filled with Ska. Yep. That was my As biggest. As we learned. My biggest downside of that movie is they mentioned Ska. They do the whole Ska thing, and then they just don't have Ska. Like, what yeah, are you, what the whole are you doing? goof is that Ska is, Ska is not dead Ska is not dead, and they hate that it's not dead. And in a movie with an undead character, the final fight should have been a Ska song. Yeah. No, it should have been. There should have been at least three songs. The three whole Ska movie songs. should have been all Ska music. Yeah. That was... That's a that's an editorial failure on their part. <laughs> I just... I don't know. I don't know how you create that movie. It goes through all the processes of like Hollywood and like checks and everything, and nobody's just like, you know, we we should put Scott on this. Like nobody. I don't know. It, I feel like uh, you know sometimes, sometimes maybe they couldn't license. Maybe they didn't have the money to license such amazing music like 1990s ska. <laughs> you know. <laughs> There's got to be some ska that's like. I'm sure if I was a ska band, I'd be thrilled to be any in any movie. Yeah, I'd be There's so be happy. Some unknown ska band. In fact, if you're an unknown ska band, you go into that. Like you're probably gonna get a bunch of bunch of listens. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I feel I feel like it could it would have been fine, but nope. Yeah, it's <laughs> that was the big thing. But Nick Cage, great vampire, great vampire. Uh. He played the part probably as good as you could play it. Yeah, as good as anyone could play a vampire. I love that he that when he talks through his fake teeth, he's like, Renfield, oh, <laughs> oh, bring me bolters. I love it. Yeah. No, it was just big a, fan. It was a fun movie. Yeah, it was a big thing. It was just fun. Uh, but I don't know. I think that's all my things of the week. Do you do anything else? No, I've done nothing of value. I played video games for the last... Three, four, th four days straight. 
<laughs> and honestly, I've loved every minute of it. It's been a while since I've enjoyed something this much, so I am here for it. Oh, I will say, this is even from this week, but the other week, I did turn on the TV, well, YouTube TV, and it recommended me Chopped. So I was like, it must be listening to our Hell thing. yeah. Because I watched Chopped, and I was uh, I was doing your, your template algorithm or whatever you said. Yep. You're right. The one guy was like, I hope to win this so that I can give my family money and the good life. And they're like, yeah, he's chopped. <laughs> yeah, I uh, was watching. Oh, man, I, I don't remember who I was watching it with, but I was watching with someone the other day. And it was an episode where it, it was very, very, it was clearly very close. All the food looked amazing. But yeah. uh, the, this one woman goes, they say, they say, well, why are you here? What are you competing for? And uh, she says, you know, I'm trying to show my daughter that anyone can do anything. And I was like, oh, she's going to get chopped. But then <laughs> two contestants later, the last person they talked to, they're like, so what would you do with the $10,000? And I was like, oh, he's chopped. Never mind. <laughs> the, if they ask that question, what would you do with the money? You're gone. They're not giving you the money. <laughs> that, is, that is the firm rule. <laughs> they can say anything else. They can ask you about your life and stuff. And it's like, okay, that person's probably gone. But no. They, they say, what are you going to do with the money? Chopped. I was like, oh, they're gone. And then, of course, they were. Because that show is so formulaic. I don't give a <laughs> shit. It is great. That is a great show. I don't know why they do. Is it because they do that so you think, like, oh, this person has to win and they get rid of them? Like, is that it? I think they assume that no one's watching every single episode. Or because they have to produce so many episodes so quickly that whoever the editing team is they were given they're, they're given a mandate yeah and they just chop it up in that way because a lot of times where uh if you look really hard you know as the clock ticks down uh, let's say there's like 50 seconds remaining and they're working their butts off trying to to cook the food if you look at actually their stations and the editing they're clearly done way before they uh run out of time yeah You'll see that that like they're panicking and get stuff done, but then it will cut to a wide shot and <laughs> half of them are done with their food, and then it'll cut to a quick shot and that same person like chopping something in the last minute. And it's <laughs> like, okay, all right, all right. It's all for drama. We get it. And here's the thing, I enjoy it. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna hate on it. It's just if you pay enough attention, you're like, okay, this is highly edited, and they very clearly have because the way it works is um, I don't know, have you ever done like a like a show like this, in your YouTube career. What like chop? I mean, like just any type of live, uh, sort of like reality TV thing. Uh, I feel like I have once, but I can't remember. But I'm pretty sure I have. Like what they will do is, it'll be like, okay, we're doing the competition. So let's say it's like a video game competition, and you and I are playing a game against each other, right? Yeah. We play the game, we do all that, they get the footage. Then, what ends up happening is if, if there's judges or whatever, the judges are pulled aside and they're interviewed, and they're asked questions like, all right, so when you were watching and Jesse was ahead by one point, what were you feeling at the time? And then they're told to phrase it, so there I was watching Jesse's one point, at, like that kind of thing. They don't yeah. answer the question, they phrase And then same thing with us, we'd be pulled aside, and then it's like, so, Crendor, you came back in the end and you won. What were you feeling in that moment? And you'd have to be like, there I was. I was winning and I just uh, blew my mind. Like that kind of shit. It's yeah. all, but they do it after the fact so they can take the questions and then they edit it to put it in the moment. So it seems like as you're playing, you're like, I knew I was going to win. I could feel it in my bones. Like that kind of thing. Yeah. And so yeah. it's all kind of like scripted, even though it's reality. It's still, there's a producer or someone there writing notes, taking notes, trying to figure out exactly how to spin what just happened. Yeah. So it's like uh, they kind of do the office format. Or it absolutely. Feels like that's Yes, the office is the gateway into that. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And so because you always think like, how are these people talking about the things they just they're doing right now? And that's why because they film it after. Yeah, they film everything after once it's already happened and they take the time to sort of like sit down. You know, they probably send us or, you know, if it was the office, it would be like, 
you know, they film a day and then the next day they'd be like, hey, so yesterday was pretty crazy. What happened with that thing? Right. So yeah. the, the, the producers, whoever would take the time to come up with questions to guide you into giving them the answer they needed so that then they can edit it in and either make you a good guy or a bad guy. Right. That's pretty much yeah. it. Yeah. It's uh, it, honestly, that feels like the base of reality TV. <laughs> It really is. I mean, even in The Office, for example, there was an episode where Ant, I, I don't know if it was cut, though. It might have been, I saw a cut thing where it was Angela, who is, you know, like everyone sees as like kind of a pain in the ass. Yeah. But it's her yelling at the producers for making her look bad. And I think that might have been cut from an episode, but like, you know, even though it's it's a comedy show, the idea that they still tried to make it like, Yo, the producers are, are messing with what's going on in the office. I think is fun, and yeah. so, you know, that's a it's an interesting take on it. Well, you know what else is an interesting take? Taking some time to <laughs> work on your mental health, boy. That's <laughs> we got there though. We got there though. <laughs> yeah, that's because today we're sponsored by Better Help. I think I think it's safe to say that generally in life. We all kind of know what's good for us, but our brain will either get in the way, you know, we'll, we'll overthink it, or we'll just like, you know, I'll deal with it tomorrow, right? Or or you'll just not want to mess with it because it's too overwhelming. You know what I mean? Yeah. Everything from, you know, going to the gym to having that conversation with a person who is just a little too toxic for your life, or, you know, maybe... Work is is not the job that you want. All these different things that are happening to you, you just need someone to talk to sometimes. Someone who is an outside observer, who isn't part of your daily life. Someone who has the qualifications needed to give you some good advice. Therapy helps you figure out what's holding you back so you can work on yourself instead of against yourself. It's helpful to remember, I think, that you know coping skills are important. Setting boundaries is important. The power of no is important. All the things you can do to be your best self. And I think for a lot of us, we have to work through a lot of stuff to get there. And BetterHelp is going to give you that sort of push to make that happen. If you're thinking of starting therapy, but you know you, you don't want to go to an office, you're not really sure yet, you want to give it a try, BetterHelp is that try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, suited to your schedule. All you got to do is fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist. You can switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. It feels good to talk to someone about your problems. Make your brain a friend, not an enemy. Don't sit up at night, laying in bed, replaying the past and all those different things. Work through that stuff. With BetterHelp, visit BetterHelp.com slash Cox and get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P, dot com slash C-O-X. Also today, we're brought to you by Factor. Factor is going to get you all those good meals in this very busy fall season that is already in swing. If you're looking for something wholesome, if you're looking for something convenient, jam-packed with nutrients and all the good stuff that's going to get you feeling good on your already jam-packed days, Factor is America's number one ready-to-eat meal kit. It can help fuel you up, breakfast, lunch, dinner, whenever you need it, with chef-prepared, dietitian approved ready-to-eat meals delivered straight to your door. You'll save time, you'll eat well, you'll stay on track with your lifestyle. Adjust your stride this autumn without missing a step. Choose from 35 plus weekly flavor packed, fresh, never frozen meals that promote a healthy lifestyle. And the best part is they're all ready to cook in two minutes. You can relish the fall flavors with a delightful assortment of autumn dishes, including seasonal veggies, cranberry pecan chicken, apple Dijon pork chops, and all of it, 550 calories or less per serving. Plus, you can add all sorts of snacks, 45 plus additional add-ons, like um, apple cinnamon pancakes, 
bacon and cheddar egg bites with potato, bacon, egg breakfast skillets, all sorts of stuff. You get cold pressed juices, shakes, smoothies, sweet treats. As October wraps up, head over to factormeals.com slash cox50 and use code cox50 to get 50% off. That's COX50 at factormeals.com slash cox50 to get 50% off. All right, Crendo, let's go to Chopper's Gonna Get the Crendo has the traffic out there. Oh boy, traffic is looking pretty crazy actually because we are starting to hit that holiday season. We got Halloween right up here soon. Uh, just a couple days away, and then uh, we got Thanksgiving, and then you got Christmas. Oh, man, it is hitting the holidays hard right here, right now, and the traffic is taking its toll. We got planes, we got conventions, we got trains, we got boats, we got chapter copters. People trying to steal our chapter copter ideas. You won't be doing that, I'll tell you that much. Back to you. Thanks, Crendor. All right, let's go to weather. Woo! weather oh god i wasn't prepared for the weather i was just prepared to do that little intro thing i mean bless uh, you it was i mean it was an intro it was all right it was I an have, intro uh, a weather request request for Paw Paw, michigan i've drove through a few times on my way to chicago and always wondered about it i've only seen a few buildings and a gas station and wonder if there was more to it but too lazy to research myself so i was hoping you would p.s jesse is a cutie First off, thank you. Second, <laughs> don't look up Papa Michigan because Papa Michigan is a musical artist. <laughs> oh, yeah, Papa there Michigan is. is part of the Michigan and Smiley Jamaican reggae dance hall duo consisting of Papa Michigan and General Smiley. <laughs> <laughs> General Smiley. They that rose. Is. This is crazy. <laughs> They rose to popularity during the first wave of dance hall music in the 1970s, and they're still putting music out in 2022? Hell yes. Dude, General Smiley sounds like he's got lyrics being like, I'm the, <laughs> I lead the war of love. <laughs> I'll put a <laughs> smile on your face. <laughs> but, you know, reggaeton or something. Yeah. I had General Smiley, it looks like he sang with Bob Marley. Maybe he did. I think it says he did. Papa Michigan. Papa yeah, Michigan. Yeah. Hell yeah, Papa Michigan. Okay, how do you spell this, though? How do you spell Papa like, Michigan? Like Pa, like P-A-W space P-A-W. Oh, a village in Michigan. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's uh, not so, as cool as Papa Michigan, but like, all right. Yeah. Uh, Papa Michigan, 42 degrees right now with some rain and showers. Uh, they're actually getting the rain that we got today. Uh And we take a look here at currently 38 degrees. Uh, well, feels like 38 degrees. Pressure 30.09 inches. Visibility seven miles. Wind six miles an hour. 8:12 a.m. sunrise. 6:41 p.m. sunset. Dew point 40. UV index zero. And a moon phase of full moon. Uh, pretty crazy. Full moon. You never know. You never know what those full moons. You never know. You never know. <laughs> Uh, take a look at the old 10 day Monday 42 with a.m. rain and snow. Uh oh. Tuesday, p.m. snow showers. Uh-oh, 38. Wednesday, 43, mostly cloudy. Thursday, 47, partly cloudy. Friday, 53, mostly cloudy. Saturday, 59, mostly cloudy. Sunday, you're going to see that 55 and mostly cloudy. And then Monday starts right up again with the old 51 with rain. You know how you can tell this, uh, <laughs> this place is very much in the Midwest? Uh, There's one main street. And on this main street, it starts at a Walmart supercenter, goes <laughs> past the Tractor Supply Co., <laughs> drives right past a Pizza Hut, Taco Bell, McDonald's, Jimmy John's, Burger King, Wendy's, all in the subway, yep. all on the same road within seconds of each other. And Red's Root Beer. I'm looking, yeah, Red, also the Chicken Coop. I'm uh, looking at the yeah. Chicken Coop. <laughs> Red's, root beer, Red's Root Beer is probably the place. Oh, yeah, that's. Yeah, it looks like they got your standard, like, hot dog, hamburger. Uh, yeah, Red's. Beer. Red's, oh, here's the, yeah. Red's, the burgers look like the buns charred. Like, Red's looks yeah. like it slaps. Meanwhile, it's I right like next Red's. to Arby's. <laughs> yeah, I don't like that. I don't like that. Don't the like Arby's, that. Tra like, how's Arby's, Jimmy John's, McDonald's, Taco Bell, Pizza Hut, Burger King still open when Copper Grill, which looks like an old-timey diner, is open? 
The chicken coop is open. Red's root beer is open. Yeah. Yeah, why would you ever go here? <laughs> Even the grape juice company. What do you mean the grape juice company? What the hell is this? Grape juice company. Grape juice company from Beverage World. The Pawpaw Grape Juice Company. The Pawpaw Grape... They got Pawpaw Grape Juice Company. <laughs> uh, They're making grape juice right there in Pawpaw, Michigan. Also, they have the Pawpaw Brewing Co. They have a winery. They got yeah, they Big B Coffee. They got tons of stuff here. Man. Actually, go, tons of stuff. Uh, let's see. If you they go, got Chan's Place. Yeah, they got Chan's they got, Place. If you go to Michigan Avenue, they got a whole bunch of other restaurants. Yeah. They got, like, eh, you know what? Still Midwest as hell, but, like. Oh, yeah, still. Brewster's. You can go to Brewster's and get a, a big slab of ribs. No, I'm all right. <laughs> We already talked about that. Yeah, I'm fine with that. <laughs> Let's see, they got the Dollar General, a classic. Uh, Papa Ace Hardware, yep. Here's the thing, uh, though. All these other places, 4.2, 4.3, 4.1 stars, 4.4, 4.2. Reds, 4.7, bro. Oh, yeah. Reds, oh, yeah. Oh, Reds yeah. is the winner. Uh, Meanwhile, yeah. <laughs> everything next to Reds. The 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 Arby's, yeah. actually the Arby's has a higher rating than McDonald's. Oh my god, that Arby's That's crazy. Know what's That's up. crazy. Or the McDonald's yeah. is bad. I, I mean, the McDonald's to... is rocking a three point two. That's to rough. Be fair, for McDonald's, it's probably about average. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably much worse on numerous other McDonald's. I found. I mean, Brewster's... Taco Bell's got three point nine. I think that says enough. Right, also, I mean... there's just a Starbucks. Oh, Starbucks yeah. is in the Family Fair supermarket. Oh, you didn't say that Brewster's is also Dickman House. I'm sorry, what? Yeah, it says Brewster's Food and Spirits slash Dickman House. Hold on, hold. Slat, it is Dickman House. <laughs> Why is it Old called Dickman, Dickman House? House? I don't what? know. <laughs> Dickman House. I don't. Uh, you know what? Also, just looking at Brewster six months ago, it definitely looks like a place that. Gordon Ramsay would go to and be like, the decor looks like it's from 1980. It, uh, also, he sounded more like Dracula than he did Gordon Ramsay. Redfield, <laughs> the decor in this dick house looks like it's from 1980. <laughs> I'd watch Dracula's Kitchen Nightmares, honestly. Also, looking at this food, yeah, no, I'm all right. Sorry, Dickmans. This food isn't that appetizing. None of this looks that good. The prime rib is raw. And I love it. Like they got nachos. Those nachos are ninety percent green onion. No, this looks this looks bad. <laughs> this looks bad. Yeah. Mm -mm. No, thank you. I would I would any day of the week go to Red's root beer. Comparatively, oh, yeah. that, Red's is the spot. I, I don't know if I need to be doing this, but I promote Red's. Red's, that's the shit. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah, and then they got... Hold uh, on, what are the prices at Reds? Oh, they're going to be cheap. You know it. Oh, my God, you can get French fries, a b whole thing of, like, a big thing of French fries for two ninety nine, Bro. Oh, man. And you know, they're, they're those, like, diner fries, right? That's what I'm saying, those big-ass fries. That's so... This, oh, this is cheap. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Oh, yeah, I see them. They got those crinkle cuts. Dude. Yeah, this is pretty. This is pretty big. This is pretty. Oh, yeah. You can get the root beer, a large, a large frozen glass root beer, extra large root beer. <laughs> oh my god, root beer yeah, float. Yeah, they that frost. Yo, I just want to say for the record, the root beer floats four twenty, and that is hilarious. <laughs> that is pretty funny. Hell yeah, hell yeah, <laughs> root beer floats four twenty. Uh, yeah, that, that root beer is a little defrosted, but that's all right. Red's root beer, yeah, I love that. I gotta look at the, I gotta look, I gotta see the root beer. Okay, yo, they got big frosted mugs. Yo, they're just sitting in your car drinking a big glass of root beer. That's yeah. the. Here's the thing, a lot of people overseas do not know what root beer tastes like, and Wait, they don't have root beer. I'm telling you, especially I've had numerous people in the states from Norway over the years, and I don't know if this is just like a Scandinavian thing, but. Every time I have anyone in town from, like, northern Europe, they are like, what's root beer? I'm like, oh, it's delicious. I love root beer, especially cold root beer. And every time they try it, they're like, it tastes like toothpaste. This is gross. <laughs> every time. <laughs> every time. 
They it must be like an acquired thing. American taste, but I love root beer. I love root beer, too. It's just like 8 billion grams of sugar. Sure. I mean, it's mostly, yeah, it's not something I'm going to drink all the time, but like, give me a root beer and like a frosted glass. Oh, my God. F me up, dude. Yeah. Um, and that's the weather. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Let's go to sports. Sports. We've got sports right here right now. Uh, looks like the Chargers are up on the Bears 30 to 7. So that is quite the score. Uh, we also had some other games today. We had the Rams losing to the Cowboys. Uh, Vikings beating the Packers, but Kirk Cousins going down with an ACL or a, no, an Achilles tear. Uh oh. Uh, Titans beat the Falcons. Saints beat the Colts. Dolphins beat the Patriots. Jets beat the Giants. Jaguars beat the Steelers. Eagles beat the Commanders. Panthers beat the Texans, picking up their first win. Seahawks beat the Browns. Broncos beat the Chiefs somehow. Ravens beat the Cardinals, and the Bengals beat the 49ers. Blech. Um, And the Bills won on Thursday night against the Buccaneers. Uh, over in baseball, we have... Let's see, are they playing today? Right now, it's tied at one game apiece between the Rangers and the Diamondbacks. Good series over there, so now it's down to a best of five instead of a best of seven. Both teams win a game. And basketball has started up. And we currently have a decent amount of undefeated teams. We got the Pelicans, Mavericks, Magic, Pacers, Celtics, all at 2-0, and the Nuggets at 3-0. But we also have an entire season to go. And then in hockey, you got the Bruins at the top at 15 points. You got the Rangers at the top at 12. You got the Avalanche at 12 and the Golden Knights at 17. And that is sports. All right. What is our fact of the day? Fact of the day. Uh, so I decided to look up root beer fact. So, okay. I like this. <laughs> root beer was originally made with sassafras root and bark, which, due to its mucilaginous properties, formed a natural, long-lasting foam, a characteristic feature of the beverage. Root beer is originally carbonated by fermentation. As demand and technology change, carbonated water was used. Interesting. So what I think is, uh, so I, I looked this up while you were saying that because I remembered sarsaparilla. Yeah. And I was like, well, what the hell is the difference between sarsaparilla and root beer? Yeah. And apparently sarsaparilla is made from sarsaparilla vine, while root beer is made from the roots of the sassafras tree. Oh, I didn't know that either. Apparently now, though, a lot of root beer does not include sassafras, as the plant has been known to cause serious health conditions. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well. well, there you go. But I, you know what? If I had to pick, I would pick sarsaparilla over root beer. Why? I don't know. There's something about it. I've always enjoyed it a little bit more. Also, I think it's because it's rarer to find. Oh, okay. I see. Like, I, I, if you go to the grocery store, I don't know how often you're just going to see sarsaparilla sitting there. But if you're, like, at Texas Old Barbecue House, then it's probably <laughs> there. And it's just you don't see it that often, I guess. I don't know. Huh. Yeah, it's... uh. It says sassafras can cause liver damage and liver cancer. <laughs> Jesus. Well, there you go. <laughs> so there you now go. we know. <laughs> Consuming just five milliliters of sassafras oil can kill an adult. What? Well, I guess don't drink a lot of that shit. <laughs> or any. <laughs> really? But sarsaparilla is not. Sa so I guess root beer. Whoa. Was root beer dangerous back? Is that why I like it so much? Because it used to be dangerous. Maybe. Maybe you have like an ancestor that really loved sassafras, but then they died because they drank so much sassafras. Whoa. In Southeast Asia, sarsaparilla is known as sarsi. Oh. Similar flavor to root beer. Now I want to know what sarsi tastes like. <laughs> Probably tastes like sassafras. Also, you can order 10 pounds of sarsaparilla for $112 on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> what a time wow. to be alive. <laughs> you can get anything on the internet. <laughs> There's got to be at least one person that ordered that for some reason. I mean, it's the number one thing that appears when you look up sarsaparilla. 
<laughs> Not the drink. Ordering bulk, 10 pounds of it. What do you even do with it? I assume make the drink. Who's, who wants it? I don't know. I'm, I'm here at I'm here at Evergreen Herbs, and they're like, yeah, you can get 10 pounds. <laughs> and it just looks <laughs> like bark. It looks like you're getting bark. Uh, yeah, apparently... This thing says it reduces inflammation and acts as a diuretic, but has been shown to cause serious uh, liver issues. So this one says it promotes healthy skin joints and is used to combat cancer. Uh, but yeah, if it hurts you, what's the po what's the point? <laughs> it's like those drugs, or it's like it's gonna stop this thing, but it'll cause this other terrible thing, and you're like, uh, okay. <laughs> what's even crazier about this? You get ten pounds. Or you can get eight ounces. Those are the differences. Or you can get the powdered version of eight ounces. Or you can get capsulized sarsaparilla. That's too much sarsaparilla. That's too many it's options. Too much. too much sarsaparilla. It's far too much. Yeah. Um, that's your fact of the day. <laughs> All right. What is our big news story of the day? Big news story of the day. 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 Here we go. This is a big news story. We actually had quite a few, but I chose this one. Okay. So hopefully these can stay relevant for the future if we don't find any news. Great. Uh, first ever Florida Man Games to feature beer belly wrestling, evading arrest obstacle course. <laughs> <laughs> the, <laughs> the oh, games. no. The games will poke fun at the state's reputation for producing strange news stories involving guns, drugs, booze, and reptiles. It's or not a good reputation. It's not a good rep. Like, don't <laughs> embrace it. It's not good. It's too late. They've embraced it. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of fixing all the problems with our state, everyone get high on meth and let's race. St. <laughs> Augustine, Florida. It ain't the Olympics, but a group of Floridians... <laughs> Playing the host competition steamed according to the collective antics of the beer-loving, gator-possessing, rap sheet, heavy, mullet-wearing social media phenomena known as Florida Man. Organizers of the Florida Man Games describe the competition as, quote, the most insane athletic showdown on Earth. Hell yes. The, on the, Earth? On Earth. <laughs> the games will poke fun at Florida's reputation for producing strange news stories. Uh, among the con uh, among the contests con contests yeah, planned yeah. for <laughs> planned for next February in St. Augustine, Florida, according to the organizers, are the evading arrest obstacle course in which contestants jump over fences and through yards while being chased by real police officers. The category five cash grab in which participants participants try to grab as much money in a wind blowing booth and the self explanatory beer belly wrestling. Quote, this isn't just a competition. It's a one-of-a-kind <laughs> Floridian spectacle. <laughs> I kind of like it. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I kind of like it, too. I'd watch this. If it was a little more dangerous, like chased by alligators through a convenience store, I'd be in. <laughs> <laughs> the, <laughs> the Florida man concept crept into the nation's consciousness a decade ago with Florida man Twitter account. I'll have you know we were... Yeah, yeah, we were ahead of that. We were ahead of that curve. Yeah. Uh, the account with the tagline, Real Life Stories of the World's Worst Superhero, has been home to headlines such as Florida Man, Fire Bomb's Garage That Impounded His Car, Hits Own Vehicle. You ever and think about how, like, we started so many trends? We really have. We re I mean, like, we really, I'm not even, this isn't even a joke. <laughs> we really have. Yeah, we really have. It's, uh, and we never get credit. No one credits us. Yeah. Nobody. But we so, don't seek credit because, yeah. like Florida Man, <laughs> we're only here to bring joy. Yeah, it's not about the credit or the fame. It's about the people. Right. Yeah, it's about the people. <laughs> yeah, 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 sure. It's about the people. Yeah, it's about the people. <laughs> Good um, one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, and other headlines such as Florida Man tried to pay for McDonald's with weed. General admission tickets to the event are going for $45. Two former stars of the 1990s television show American Gladiators have agreed to serve as referees. Oh, my God. Is it laser and blazer and taser? Doesn't say. Damn. 
I guess we'll find out. Uh, they said a St. Augustine resident is behind the games. Pete Melfi, owner of the 904 Now, a media outlet covering St. John's County. Quote, we thought, how could we really play on these Florida man headlines we hear so much about? Someone gave me the idea to make it in that and blah, 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 an athletic competition. Uh, it's going to be a wild day of mud games and Florida style obstacle courses. It's going to be a real opportunity to live that Florida man life for a day. Hell yeah, brother. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's February Florida man games. Buckle up. I'm here for it. I like it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm ready. February, what else are you going to do in Florida? Nothing. Drugs. Exactly. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Um, That's your big news story of the day. I like it. All right. Well, that is it for us. Thanks so much for listening or watching. I've enjoyed this podcast. Crendor, hit him with the socials. We got socials. Check out the YouTube.com slash Cox and Crendor podcast to listen to all these episodes. Subscribe, hit the bell, hit the notification thing. Be alerted when these go up over there. Uh, And you can see all the playlists of previous years. You can see all the episodes over on YouTube.com slash Cox and Crendor podcast or go to YouTube.com slash Cox and Crendor. That's where all the animations are. You can subscribe there, hit the bell as well. Also, you can see us on our things. We've also, got also, <laughs> also, we're also on Spotify, iTunes, SoundCloud, etc. Also, we're on YouTube.com slash Jesse Cox, YouTube.com slash Crendor, Twitch Jesse Cox, Twitch Crendor, TikTok Jesse Cox, TikTok, TikTok Crendor, uh, Instagram Notorious Cox, Instagram Crendor is taken, uh, YouTube Cren Clips, YouTube Cox Clips, Patreon Jesse Cox, Patreon Crendor, Facebook Jesse Cox, Facebook Crendor. And uh, uh, there's some other stuff. I don't know. Yeah. And some other things. (laughs) Okay. Well, that's it for us. Thanks so much. We'll see you all next time. And as always, to be continued.